Speaker. I call Jan Lobi. Tēnā koe, Madam Speaker. Em he mihi kāna tene ki nga uri o nga hapu o te rohi o te wairua, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. On behalf of the Green Party, I want to join other members in this House in welcoming the people and the leaders from the iwi and hapu o te rohi o te wairua to the House today. It's been 30 years uh, since te rohi o te wairua lodged their claim and 16 years since members of that hapu and iwi of the Wairoa district came together at Rangiahua Marae to plan for the resolution of their claim. 30 years. There are members in this parliament and in our party who were not born yet at that time. Um, and that that was the start of a process that concludes here today. And of course, the original and ongoing harm that we acknowledge today has compounded across many generations from the 1840s. Today in this house, we stand unified in acknowledging the wrong. And I want to acknowledge all of those who have exercised such incredible persistence over those decades and over those generations to get this bill to this stage today. I understand that we have particular acknowledgements to make to John Funga, Te Tera Lead Negotiator, and Tamati Olsen, Te Tera Chair, and Tato Tato or Te Wairua Trust, especially the Chair, Leon Symes, and Deputy Chair, Pierre Munro. But of course, I suspect all the work is founded on the resistance and faith of Kaumatua and Kuia, many of whom have passed already. So I too would like to add the Green Party's voice in remembrance for the efforts of all those who have passed before we saw this day. This is, can only ever be a partial acknowledgement of what happened. And so much has gone on in recounting the history, but again, it is important to put at least some of it from each of our parties on the record again in this House today. So as has been acknowledged by others, I too want to acknowledge that one of the first breaches was of the treaty not even getting to your area. <laughs> and then you being bound to this document and this agreement that the Crown put in place that you didn't sign up to. And then you were forced into this arrangement that you had no say in. And I want to acknowledge too that the truth and reconciliation process that is occurred as part of the reconciliation and that that is about healing and healing the hurts that have occurred across the generations. But it is still within the frame of the Crown, um, as is the financial settlement in particular. And I think we should acknowledge this. It's not really about reparation. It's a deed of settlement, and it is an agreed and sanitised historical account, but it is not full compensation. My back of the envelope calculation suggests that over 300,000 acres of land were scammed and stolen by settlers and the Crown. And the Greens will say this at every reading. We do not actually recognise that this is full and final settlement, even though that is what is written into legislation, because it is not full by any stretch of the imagination. And we do not believe that it can be final because there is no way of telling at this stage what the impact of those historical breaches will be on future generations. But we recognise to get 
this build to the house and to go through the processes that iwi and hapu have gone through is a huge achievement te wairua tapakoro submission from the cluster number one estimated that the economic loss of hapu o te rohi o te wairua from the loss of rates and values of the land that was alienated the total of both accountings came by their reckoning to 1 billion 646,373,650 dollars not even counting for the commercial loss or the loss of rental or GST or any of those other factors the settlement that the crown currently considers and describes as full provides 100 million dollars in redress the Green Party does not consider this full or final. This is an exceptionally generous gift from Te Rohi or Te Wairua. And I can imagine there may be, and I've heard certainly from many Pākehā in New Zealand, in, New, in this country, who might think that $100 million is really generous of the Crown. <laughs> And that, of course, the country could never afford that 1.6 billion, as if the iwi and hapu of Te Rohi or Te Wairua could afford this loss. <coughs> and of course, the Crown did pay out 1.6 billion in 2010 to people affected by the collapse of South Canterbury Finance, which the Minister, Prime Minister at the time, John Key, described as a relatively small payment. And I want to put that on record from the Green Party to New Zealanders, not to, as a message to the iwi and hapu listening today, but in any time anyone feels the urge to suggest that Māori are getting something from the Crown, just remember. This was land taken by the Crown, and this cannot even touch upon true reparation in a financial sense. But I do want to also be clear that this settlement is the fifth largest in our country's history for iwi. And the negotiators have done their people proud. But if we are to all move forward with integrity, the Green Party believes we need to be honest about the limitations of the Crown's general approach to settlements and acknowledge our collective moral and financial debt to hapu and iwi. So to touch briefly on some of those breaches, going right back to the non-arrival of the treaty and the binding to that agreement, and the dodgy practices around surveying and not investigating customary rights, and the Crown putting Māori under extreme duress, using confusion over the legal status of the land to take thousands and thousands of acres, the breaking up of customary and collectively owned land into individual ownership to then be able to effectively steal it, and to take more land through the Public Works Act. This Crown has been responsible for all of those acts of theft. And as we heard, and I spoke on the second reading of this bill on the last sitting day before Christmas last year, we remembered the invasion of the Crown of Omaru Harakiki Kainga, where Māori who were defending the land of peaceful occupation of their own land were summarily executed by the Crown and others taken and detained without trial on the Chathams. Acts of deep shame for this Crown that we need to acknowledge as a country to have a hope of healing and moving forward. And speaks too that this is more about money, this is more than land, this is about the heart and well-being of people and us 
as a country, and that if we cannot acknowledge the crimes and the wrongs, then we have no hope to move forward on a different basis. So finally, I hope at the end of today that we can move forward together as a people to a future beyond the past. Madam Speaker. I call Lawrence Yule. Madam Speaker, kia ora everybody.